If you're planning to photograph people in a studio setting, well, you need to own or rent a studio, right? Wrong. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my home studio and show you some cool tips for maximizing space. Be sure to stay tuned until the end and I'll show you how to create a bed, a wall, and a product platform all in one unit that stores flat against the wall. Hey gang, 10 years ago, I decided it was time to give up my 2,000 square foot studio space that was a 40 minute commute from my home and build a studio in my basement that could be used for some of my work and then simply rent studio space on a daily basis when I had client projects that required more space. The studio that I'm going to show you in this video is actually the second basement studio that I've built. My wife and I decided to move about five years after I built the first one. So this is my second go around with a home studio. My wife and I live in a simple townhouse. It's just the two of us and our puppies, so we no longer have a need for a big place with lots of property. Coming into the current home, I knew that I wasn't going to service clients in this studio, so I didn't need a reception area of any kind. My dilemma was that we loved the layout of the home, but I hated the layout of the basement. So I knew it was going to be a challenge to make the space work as a photo studio. And indeed, I was able to use some of the tricks that I learned from the first home studio, but I had to do some pretty creative problem solving to come up with some of the new solutions in this space. I have a total of 671 square feet in this basement, but due to the layout and of course things like heating units and hot water heaters and a sump pump, I only have a usable 474 square feet for shooting and makeup and another 75 square feet that is usable for storage. Now I routinely use a makeup artist when I shoot, so it was important to have a comfortable space for my makeup artist to work. Plus, if you've ever worked with a makeup artist and they're any good, then you know they can be total divas, so it's best to do as much as you can to make them happy. I use the secondary space that is 12 feet wide by 17 feet wide for my makeup and staging space. And I'll show you in a minute how it becomes part of the shooting space from time to time. I have two small auxiliary spaces that I use for storage where the heater and the water heater are. And this small 50 square foot space that houses some plumbing is built out as a small changing room. I stress the word small there to make a point. I've learned over the years that you do not want to give models a large comfortable changing space with mirrors. If you do that, they'll take twice as long to change while they stress to make sure their outfit looks just right and they'll mess with the hair and the makeup. My mirrors are outside the dressing room in the makeup area. And the reason I don't want them taking the time to fix their outfit in the changing room, as soon as they're dressed, they're going to sit down in the makeup chair. So there's no point. I teach my models to adjust their clothing after they're done hair and makeup and right before they walk onto the set. So my changing area is pretty much the equivalent of a small closet with a table and chair and a place to hang clothes and a door for privacy. Nothing fancy, just the necessities. The makeup area is a set of kitchen cabinets that I picked up at a local supplier. They were discontinued, so I spent less than $200 for the five cabinets. The countertop and 30 inch by 36 inch mirror from Home Depot, along with two three foot T12 fluorescent light fixtures. If I were building this today, I would go with the T8 bulbs, not the T12s. I know some of you are going to ask about LEDs, and my answer is no. Check the comments section below for my explanation why. My two makeup chairs are old salon chairs that I picked up about 10 years ago from an older photographer that was shutting his business down because he was struggling making the move into digital photography from film. Salon chairs can be expensive. If you don't want to shell out that kind of money, an adjustable stool like this one can be found at Amazon for just over $40. The important part is that it's adjustable. Trust me, your makeup artist and or hairstylist will thank you for that feature. The small cart that you see on the right of the makeup station wheels onto the set to give the makeup artist a working platform so that she doesn't have to keep walking off the set to get hairspray or other supplies when we're actually shooting. I have a small desk setup made from the same type of countertop as the makeup station and the two desk supports are from Ikea. The high definition TV on the wall serves as an occasional background for videos, a method of displaying and reviewing photos, a music source, and a big screen for my makeup artist to view while I'm shooting tethered. And lastly, a small table and chair set that just looks good. They're hardly ever used for more than something to sit things on. The area that houses the heater and water heater also contains 16 running feet of shelving units for storage, all dedicated to the studio. The main shooting area that you see here is 23 feet long by 12 feet wide. 
and it has a ceiling height that is just shy of eight feet. I chose white walls and a white ceiling so that I could actually use the space both as a white background and also as built-in reflectors. In this space, I used a wood laminate flooring just for something different. In the past, I've used a neutral gray painted floor and in hindsight, I would go back to the gray floor if I were to remodel or move. The neutral gray floor will allow you to use color gels on your strobes to change its color, just like I explained to you in this video. So this is where the creative challenges came in for making a space like this versatile. With just 23 feet from end to end, I can still shoot a full length shot of even a tall model comfortably with a 70 millimeter or 85 millimeter lens. I will occasionally use a 50 millimeter or 60 millimeter macro for full length shots, but of course, you have to be a little more careful about the camera tilt if you want proper body perspectives. For portraits and three quarter length shots, I generally use a 100 millimeter lens in this space. Now my challenge was to keep as much stuff off the floor as possible. To do that, I mounted some fixtures from the ceiling and some from the walls. The pieces that you see circled here are lighting gear that is used for my YouTube videos. So just ignore them because I'm not gonna talk about them in this video. Hey gang, if you like what I'm doing with these videos, please take a second and hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos. And if you really like the video, please share it with your photography friends. I need your help to keep this channel growing. For the wall mounts, I use two gadgets. The first is actually for warehouses. It's a dock light with a double arm. I removed the light that comes with it and added a long threaded bolt to be able to mount my mono lights. These yellow arms were purchased when I first moved into this studio space. Shortly afterwards, I found the Manfrotto wall mounted boom arms. These are awesome because not only do they extend much further, a full seven feet, but they also can be adjusted up and down. And with them mounted on both sides of the room, I can cover pretty much every inch of space that I would want to put a light without having to place a stand on the floor. For backgrounds, I needed a solution that would allow me to keep the backgrounds close to the ceiling. None of the pre-made options that I found met this requirement. So I simply purchased the Manfrotto knockoffs made by Impact and mounted them to a one x four that I had bolted to the ceiling. This allowed me to mount six nine foot wide seamless backgrounds tight to the ceiling and all within a depth of 30 inches. To raise and lower the backdrops, I went with another Manfrotto knockoff. A little warning here, Manfrotto sells these background holder sets with metal chains for about $90. Manfrotto also makes the same holders with plastic chains for about $65. The plastic chains will snap apart if you have the holders too tight, but they do snap back together. It's just annoying when you're in the middle of a shoot and you go to change the backdrop and the chain snaps. The knockoffs are Chinese or Korean made and they snap even easier. I have no problem with mine, but I put a lot of effort into making sure that my holders were just tight enough to prevent the backdrop from unraveling, but not tight enough to snap the chain. Along the long side of the studio that separates the shooting space from the makeup area, I have mounted a simple closet track that you can buy at a hardware store. I have this mounted along the bottom of the soffit that covers the heating and air conditioning ducts. Now this was a key stroke of genius in setting up this space because it serves several purposes. If you've seen my videos on the DIY Kina flows that I made with the T8 fluorescents and the LEDs, this is the track that they hang from. Now I'll come back to that in a second. I also made two five foot by six and a half foot diffusion panels that are mounted on these tracks and can be used to create an awesome window like side lighting by placing the strobe on the other side of the panel. These diffusers are simply two inch by two inch wood cut and bolted together in a rectangle. I then purchased stretchable diffusion fabric from a theater supplier in New York and stretched it over the frames. Two layers, one on each side, and then simply stapled on the outside edges. And I used white duct tape to cover the edges. Very simple and easy. I found small white drawer handles and mounted one on each side of the panels to be able to grab them and slide them in and out of place as needed. These panels also serve as reflectors in the shooting area and can be great dividers. If I'm working with a nervous subject and have other people in the studio, I can create privacy by pulling the dividers forward. I'm also able to use the wall behind these panels to store cords and reflectors. I have hooks and brackets mounted in various spots around the studio to hold stands and grip equipment. No space goes unused. I also have two panels made from the same materials that are seven and a half feet by three feet. I can use these as reflectors for backlit shots like this, or place strobes in front of them to use them as large strip softboxes. 
Now, if you've watched the DIY Kinaflow videos, you know that I use them primarily for portraits and beauty shots. Since I have the lights hanging in the closet track, I have a bar mounted in the ceiling of the shooting space that allows me to hang my velour backdrops, and then I shoot across the main space with my subject sitting in front of the lights and me standing in the makeup area. As I mentioned before, my goal was to have as little equipment on the floor as possible. I also have some other random hooks and mounts in the ceiling that come in handy from time to time, but as I mentioned earlier, most of the gear in the ceiling is for lighting these YouTube videos. This sidewall can also be used as a background, and from time to time I've used the window. The sheer curtains that you see hanging are actually for use in the main shooting space. At the other end of the shooting space, I have this three foot by three foot box. The floor plans that we viewed before the house was built did not have anything in this corner. Between the time we signed for the house and the time construction started, a local zoning ordinance was passed that required a sump pump to be installed. So the builder's solution was to place a closet in this corner. I didn't want to lose that space, so I had them enclose it with a top that can easily be removed if I need to access the sump pump. I will frequently pose a model on top of the box and use a simple bounce flash in the white ceiling for my light. I'll often use this wall as a white background as well, sometimes pairing it up with my movable wall. Finishing the trip around the studio, I have one more kitchen cabinet with some storage units and shelving above it. This is my main workstation for gear and gadgets. I have the side of the cabinet lined with Velcro so that I can attach my 12 inch by 12 inch color gels for storage. It's also worth mentioning my wired cart. While I'm actually shooting, this cart remains by my side, often holding the computer that I'm tethered to and of course, holding my gear. When you're in the moment and taking a shot, you don't want to have to walk away to get a piece of gear or because you need to change a lens. The cart comes in very handy. So if you've been watching close, tucked in the corner of the studio is this big white box. This box becomes a bed, a wall, sometimes a background, and even a product platform or a platform to shoot children and pets. Now I'm not going to give you exact dimensions and a step-by-step -step for how to build it for two reasons. The most important reason is that I have carefully measured it out so that it just fits in my studio space. In other words, when I tip it to lay it down, it just clears the ceiling. I wanted it as big as possible and of course still be able to lay it down. So do pay attention, I'll give you lots of views so that you can go and measure out your own. When I'm ready to use it, I just slide it out of the corner. If I need the bed for a boudoir shot, I'll lay it down and add bedding. This works better than a real mattress or an air mattress because it is soft enough to look like a bed, but the model doesn't sink into it like a real mattress. If I need a platform, I simply leave the bedding off and I have a white platform. I will tell you that the large side of my unit is 4 feet by 7 feet and the box is 20 inches deep. If I need a wall, I just slide it into place. It will support the weight of a model leaning against it. I can also use it for a background in a pinch. The platform is built with 2 inch by 3 inch lumber and 3 8 inch plywood. I have plywood covering the top and two sides. The other two sides are open as it's not possible to photograph more than two sides at a time. And this does make it easier to handle and move the unit. I have simple felt furniture pads on the bottom of the legs so that I can easily slide the unit wherever I need it. So there you have it, my home studio. Hopefully this will give you some ideas for how to best maximize an outfit your home space. I've tried to list as many of the gadgets that I've mentioned as possible in the description below and included links to them at Amazon or Home Depot. Now that I've given you lots of ideas for how to spend your next few weekends, remember gang, your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios. Thanks for watching. If you find these videos helpful, please give them a thumbs up and share them with your photography friends. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And if you have a question that you would like answered, post it in the comments section below. Your question could be my next video.